How many of you are here? Three. 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 Everybody, it's day one in Georgia. We got up this morning, 4:30 a.m. Absolutely brutal plane flight out of Sioux Falls, where we were. Up, I should say, down here to Atlanta. I've never been to Georgia besides going to the airport, so I'm excited to uh, to just be here in the state and hopefully maybe meet some of you guys if we're here. <laughs> What's the yeah to my What's the jack and that jack? And finally, eventually, we had arrived to Macon, Georgia. Now, as I said before, I've never even been to Georgia in the first place, and Macon is a pretty small town when compared to the likes of Atlanta. But Macon has quite the history, and in the Civil War, it was actually the official arms producer for the Confederacy. Macon has given birth to a number of musicians like the Allman Brothers and even Jason Aldean in recent years. But in the center of Macon lies a very historic hotel that was once the house of a notable Maconite. Well, I don't know if you call them Maconites, people from Macon, whatever you want to say. This is the 1842 Inn. And when we rolled up to this house, we couldn't help but notice how undeniably spooky it looks on the outside. 
Soon we met up with somebody from the hotel to give us a tour of the place, explain the history, and welcome us to Macon. Hi, I'm Charles Olson. I'm the general manager here at the 1842 Inn in Macon, Georgia. And uh, I'd like to take you on a little tour of the inn and show you around a little bit. We've had some interesting things happen here over the last few years. And uh, since I've been here over the last three as general manager, uh, I think we'll be able to show you around and show you some of the things that have occurred. And the house was originally built in 1842 uh, by John Gresham uh, and, and his family. John Gresham was a lawyer here in Macon. Uh, he was a past mayor of Macon and uh, went on to serve in the Georgia Supreme Court. He also uh, had a large farm down uh, in what is currently uh, South Houston County at uh, Highway 96. The original house actually ended at the back, at the wall that's behind our front desk. If you can imagine, these uh, parlors to the sides are, are essentially have the same footprint uh, downstairs as they do upstairs. Uh, but the original back wall would be here and then there were two separate out parcels on the property uh, one was a separate kitchen being that in 1842 with a wood burning stove if you had a kitchen fire uh, you didn't want to lose your entire house uh, you'd rather have the separate facility for the kitchen and also they had uh, their their quarters for the attendants as well uh, which was on a separate uh, structure on the other side of the property so in the summertime, they, the family would sleep downstairs and in the wintertime, they would move upstairs and would sleep upstairs uh, to take advantage of the heat throughout the day, generated by all the different fireplaces. We do have uh, working fireplaces in, in all of the uh, rooms that are in the main house and there are four parlors downstairs that also have the working fireplaces in them as well. The house was then built, uh, bought by the Adams family, not the Snap Your Fingers Adams family, but the BF Adams family in 1900. And then the house was uh, expanded to its current footprint by them that was completed about 1902. Uh, we do have one additional facility uh, in the back of the property as a guest uh, carriage house and that was uh, originally actually on Vineville Avenue which is just uh, up the road from the end uh, and was suffered a, a house fire and then rather than the entire property being destroyed uh, it was taken apart and then reassembled and rebuilt uh, here on our uh, property in 1983. So the house was essentially moved onto the property uh, and then a bed and breakfast was created out of that. As we uh, kind of move through the downstairs here, uh, we'll go into our uh, dining room facility here, which we use for special events. Uh, this is what we call the Westland Room, uh, named for Westland College. It's just first all women's college in the United States, which is located right here in Macon. It was originally about four doors down from us in what is now the uh, United States Postal Service facility here in Macon. Uh, but now they've moved uh, out to, after that structure had a fire, <laughs> they moved out to uh, what is now Forsyth Road and Tucker Road. But as I mentioned, the, the facility had uh, the separate kitchen. Uh, this has always been the dining room uh, going back to 1842. And so this doorway here that is boarded up now uh, which our offices are on the other side of it, was this originally an exterior door, which would have led across a decking to the kitchen building. Uh, and then food was immediately brought in from the kitchen and served uh, in here in the dining room. So it makes for a nice you know, step back in history if you do come in and our guests, uh, they bring food in with them and they like to sit down and have dinner, uh, they can do so here at our uh, dining room table, as well as uh, we serve breakfast with all of our rooms. Uh, we'll move out here to the uh, the backyard. I will show you the uh, our courtyard. I'll show you our guest cottage. Can we talk about sure, sure, sure. all these different people? Oh, yeah, stay absolutely. Here? It's so interesting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Over the years, we've had a lot of different folks stay with us uh, who are you know, pretty noteworthy in the uh, celebrity world. When they have stayed with us, uh, they've been kind enough to sign a, a picture and either give it to us at that time or will a lot of the times send it back to us uh, later on down the road. So, I mean, we've had people from uh, Gerard Butler stay with us. So he was shooting Greenland uh, in 2019. Uh, Miranda Backron was his uh, co-star in that. Mr. Food and Lou Waters from CNN. Cher stayed with us when she was in town for Greg Allman's funeral. And Greg stayed with us. He would always stay in the Douglas room in our guest cottage. Oprah stayed with us. For Oprah, when she had her syndicated show, uh, Macon was actually 
per capita her highest rated market in the entire country. Uh, one Christmas she did her Oprah's Favorite Things episode uh, at the Macon City Auditorium and uh, while she was here for that week stayed with us here uh, at the end. Uh, Jack McBrayer is a uh, Macon native who uh, has stayed with us. Also uh, John Bloomin Odom who was on the Oakland A's uh, World Series teams in the late 70s there and, and Blue Moon uh, is also a Macon native and has stayed with us. Uh, and so we, we've had you know Herschel Walker, Chichi Rodriguez in the sports world, Percy Sledge in the music world. We've had the doctor from the Love Boat stay with us. So, uh, you know, we, we've kind of run the gamut, and whether it's sports or celebrity uh, or news anchors, we, we've had a good, uh, you know, run over the years. Diamond Rio stayed with us in uh, country music, uh, one of the great vocal groups in country music history. So it's it's been a, a very interesting run, and uh, and, and of course. Uh, the Inn has been a Triple A Four Diamond award-winning uh, property for over 30 plus years uh, consecutively, and so we have all those awards uh, here on the wall, which makes for a nice filler for <laughs> for that space. Right. We might want to kind of move over to the. Let's see. So we do have our courtyard here in between the main house and our our guest cottage, as mentioned, was moved here in 1983. Interestingly enough, in the guest cottage, uh, we have had a couple of odd things happen. Don't know whether it's associated with the fact that that structure had sustained a fire back in the uh, uh, late 70s, early 80s. We've had our maintenance manager has had his hair pulled uh, in there, just uh, somebody a quick tug on it. Uh, he's got a little, long, little longer hair. That that happened, um, but there was nobody in the room. We've had uh, guests a couple of different times actually talk about the fact that their, their sheets were yanked off of them uh, in the middle of the night or had just been pulled down real suddenly on them. So, uh, but then there was nothing in the room. A couple of odd things that have happened in the in the guest cottage. We've never had those kind of stories, any kind of interaction in the, in the main house. We've had uh, in the John Gresham room upstairs, we have had times where shoes or the, the guests claim that they put their shoes in the closet and then uh, when they came back the shoes were out of the closet or that the closet door opened and, and that sort of thing in the middle of the night you know that could just be old locks or uh, you know it could be uh, you know something beyond uh, what we we currently know so but that that's a little bit of the you know general layout here of, of the inn we do have a full parking lot behind the building interestingly enough back in the 1840s 50s and 60s the coal burning fireplaces uh, the ashes would be taken and would be put back in the uh, back where our back parking lot is now so you don't have to dig down very far to find uh, chunks of coal from back uh, from 180 150 to 180 years ago at, back there so a lot of history right in here this is the College Hill uh, section of Macon which of course anytime you have people moving and settling new areas founding uh, the highest place that you possibly could was something that uh, was desirable. You want to be away from the Okmulgee River in case there's flooding. And I read online, is there a supposed curse on Macon? Have you ever read about that? <laughs> yeah. what, what do you think about that? I, you know, I, I don't know if there's a, a curse on Macon. I, I think at, at this point, you know, we, we're all kind of make our own beds and, uh, and, and lie in them. So uh, I don't think anything that's, that's currently going on in, in town uh, uh, has anything to do with uh, a, a, any particular history of, of uh, you know, I don't think we need to go out and get a chickens and sacrifice them or anything like that but you know interestingly enough we do have the Oak Mulgee Mounds uh, National Historic Park here uh, which was designated by President Trump uh, to upgrade it from a national monument to a historic park the Creek Indians go back here thousands of years and so the park uh, we know the Great Lodge that was, was there was Earthen Lodge and so you know whether or not when the the creeks were forcibly removed from the area uh, whether or not that there was some sort of curse that was placed uh, on Macon by them I, you know, we don't know, but you know, Macon's a great place. It's a really a great place to raise a family. You know, I think most people would would point to some negatives in the town, but I, I think if you were going to do that, you could do that with any town in the United States. No curse. No, no, curse. no curse. No, <laughs> no. I mean, uh, I don't. I don't believe in it, and uh, uh, I think most people here would probably agree with me. Run anyway, back in, yeah, we go out back in. That was perfect That's timing. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Let's see here. Actually, I'll tell you what, if you want to, I can I can give you one more good story from last year. Sure. Actually. In the early part of 2020, prior to the uh, world shutting down due to the you know, pandemic, our maintenance manager and our guest services manager were standing uh, right about here uh, as we were renovating two rooms here along the back wall of the uh, that opened to our courtyard. They were talking about the circuit breakers and where uh, certain circuit breakers are for uh, various lights and so as they were discussing it uh, we have a, a, a panel that is, is here on this wall but there's another panel that's upstairs and when that uh, conversation was happening Keith Bryan our maintenance manager goes that box uh, that electrical box is upstairs and he pointed at this light and when he pointed the light cut off while the others were still on and came back on uh, and so uh, that was one of those, there's a lot of stuff that happens in this house that is somewhat uh, inexplicable, but in, in that particular case, it was a, uh, both of them would tell you, they kind of looked at each other and said, did you just see that? And uh, that it was a, one of those weird moments. Uh, very similarly about that same time last year, I was out looking at our uh, dogwood room, which opens to our front veranda. Uh, which we're redoing the bathroom in that right now so it has a brand new vanity top brand new shower in the room <laughs> and and i opened the door to the room and then walked in looked at something when i walked back out the deadbolt on the door was fully deployed uh, and so i went to just shut the door and it would normally just close shut but instead bam it hit, look back, the deadbolt's out. There's no way that could possibly happen. And even looked at the security footage, because we have uh, security cameras around the front of the property and nobody came to the door, nobody deployed the deadbolt or anything like that. It, but but uh, the door just happened to be right in line with the column so we couldn't actually see at what point it got deployed. So very interesting happening. Funny thing about that was uh, about early part of, of 2021, that same thing happened to our maintenance manager. So uh, that, that's the same instance, uh, same thing that happened to two different people at two different times. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> so let's see. <clears throat> All right. In late 2020, we had a, a housekeeper who worked for us uh, for a very short while, but she was of, of Haitian descent, and she was tending to our some of our amenities, which we we keep room supplies in this chest, and so she was working here and uh, had not been working for us for more than two weeks at this point. Came downstairs and said, oh, I was up, do you know where some supplies are? And I said, yes, and she said, I didn't, I didn't bother that little girl upstairs. And it kind of made us turn our heads a little bit because over the years, there have been different uh, reports from different people who claim to have seen a little girl here uh, with a rubber ball of, or of some sort. When she came downstairs, she said, uh, there was a little girl upstairs, but I didn't mess with her or her or mess with her ball. And at that point, uh, she had not been working with us long enough to, to hear that story or anything about it. It's not really talked about too much. So for her to just volunteer that information was, was interesting. Uh, she also talked to uh, guests who were staying in the neighboring room and asked if they had seen the, that girl. Uh, and they said they hadn't seen any child up here that morning, but they had the night before. So uh, that was uh, something that, that was kind of bizarre, but she was working here and the girl apparently walked out of our John Gresham room uh, and went across the hall into the Macon room and, uh, and that was it. So just one of those bizarre stories that have happened, but we have had uh, reports of, of our, uh, from our maintenance manager and from uh, another front desk employee who were here one evening uh, and it was a quiet evening and they heard a, a thumping noise. It sounded like somebody was bouncing a ball on the floor or against the wall. And uh, they went through the whole house, couldn't find it, but uh, you could hear that sound, just the thump, thump, thump of a, of a ball hitting. And uh, one of those moments that, uh, you know, it could have been something in the wall, but hey, uh, you know, maybe it was something a little bit more than that. And uh, maybe it was this little girl that, that apparently lives here uh, in the upstairs of the inn. Who do they think the little girl could be? 
Uh, one of the thoughts about it is that the little girl may be the daughter of John Gresham, the gentleman who built the house in 1842. Most of the things that, that happen are seem to be more tricks. Um, things like deploying the deadbolt on a door, um, lights flicker at, at the opportune moments. You know, the only being that we have, that people claim to have seen consistently is that little girl. And uh, so in terms of just a, a presence, she would probably be the number one presence. Everything else that has happened seems to be trickeration than anything else. Uh, <laughs> And for me personally, the only experience that I've had with anything that's kind of inexplicable like that is the, uh, the deadbolt deploying on our, our outside door. And that's just kind of a mystery. No one knows who she is. Uh, no, there's not there's no because idea. there's no, there are, there are a couple of photos of the family uh, that, that we have. And so, but because I haven't seen her, you know, I can't sit there and say like oh that's definitely the little girl from that photo so uh and, and i don't know if they had a, perhaps had another child who maybe didn't survive i know the son uh leroy gresham uh had spinal tuberculosis uh and so we actually have a book called the war outside my window which was a, a and we sell it here at the end but uh it was a recollection or his diary from the civil war kind of put into a in book format there so uh, but, but when he was suffering from the spinal tuberculosis, they actually used to carry him up on the roof, through the attic and up onto the roof to uh, take a look. And he would describe the troop movements going on around uh, Macon. And, and uh, you know, as you look out from the property here, of course, there's a lot of trees that are ornamental in people's yards. Uh, we have some very large trees in the front of the inn, but you know those weren't here in, in 1842, and, and of course during the Civil War in, in 1861 through 65. So to be able to see troop movements around town would have been a whole lot easier uh, in those days than it is now, because uh, everything was pretty much at that point freshly clear cut uh, through Macon, and the lots that weren't occupied were still clear cut. Any final thoughts? Anything else? <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty much. I don't really truly you know, believe in paranormal stuff. I'm not one who's gonna sit here and tell you that, that ghosts don't exist, but I'm not gonna sit here and tell somebody that they're crazy for, for believing that there are uh, ghosts and, and haunted uh, type areas. So as I like to say, everybody's welcome here at the 1842 Inn. We prefer paying guests, but hey, if we have one or two that, that live here and you know keep an eye on the place for us, then uh, all the better for us. Awesome. <laughs> Great, man. After arriving to the 1842 Inn, we got dinner, left the area, filmed another scene for a different episode that's going to be coming out soon about murder in Georgia and watched as the sunset on the property. And let me tell you guys, the sunset that night was absolutely beautiful. You can kind of see in this footage. I mean, you know, camera footage won't ever really do a sunset or any natural scene justice, but you can really, when you film these videos and you live the life that I do, you can take a second sometimes and really just think of how weird it is to be standing here for me at that moment to be standing there in Georgia after I was in South Dakota that morning filming at the 1842 Inn, this beautiful old grandiose southern building. So after we got dinner, filmed the other scene, we returned to the inn and began our investigation. And this thing, this night, it took plenty of twists and turns, and I'm sure you're not expecting what's about to happen. What's up everybody and welcome to tonight's edition of the Paranormal Files. Now, Jeff and I, Papa Spooks and I, we're here in Macon, Georgia. We left Sioux Falls where we were this morning at 4.30 in the morning, that's when we got up. It's been a very long day, but we're finally here to investigate this historic property behind us. You guys have already heard the history from the interviews that we conducted earlier, and we're just gonna hop right into the investigation. Now, we've been in the building for a while setting stuff up. We're about to go start recording on the static cameras that are downstairs on the lower level of the hotel, and I can just tell you guys, just straight off the bat, that there is a feel of almost an old haunting, some sort of a, a spirit that's been there for a while inside of this building. I kind of get the feeling that there's just something there. I don't know if it's intelligent or not yet, but I can feel it in my chest just sitting inside of the building. But we've turned off all the lights inside, we've got our equipment out, we're going to go in, start the static cameras. Uh, for the first time ever, we have two cameras. 
Here, let me show you what we got here. And I'll turn mine back off. Yep. Yep. And we've got, uh, you know, the new mounts with uh, so we can have our mic now. We'll have an IR light plus, of course, the normal lights. So we don't have to keep flipping back and forth. We got two of them. What do you have to say? You know, I think we just found out that's kind of interesting is that really this whole area or really um, you know, slave homes or manors, they're really manors. And uh, and actually a guy named Michael in here is very, very nice. He was telling us that we'll find out more tomorrow. But this is a very historic neighborhood. And I think, like you said, I think it's old. Um, there's supposedly a little girl people have seen with a ball around here a lot. Um, multiple reports, other entities. So, you know, I, I'm feeling like hopefully we're going to catch something. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's get started though. It's been a long, long day, and we've been at this about about three hours already. So <laughs> let's, well, let's keep rolling, okay? So I'm going to pause on that camera. I'm going to start that back up when we start investigating. But. Why don't you guys just follow me inside of the 1842 Inn? Very classic, almost southern looking um, building to kind of start off our Georgia series. And just to remind everybody online, we're the only guests here tonight. There's no one else staying in this building, it's just us. As you can see right here, we've already set up a uh, static camera facing the SLS camera. So I'm gonna plug the microphone in here. And we're, we're doing it this way too. It just seems to be a little better coverage and reliability than recording right on. We'll tap the tablet, right? Mm -hmm. So I know people have asked on that, but. So if you guys don't know what the SLS is, it is a piece of technology that's able to track figures in the environment. Usually it'll track uh, a human if they're standing in front of the camera. It'll show your arms, your head, your feet. But the theory is that this piece of technology that was invented to track humans can basically pick up on other sorts of forms and entities in the environment. So we've got that running here. If something appears in this room, We'll capture that on oh, camera. Quickly. Let's just show you. Uh, Colin, see now you've mapped out already. There you are. So that's how that's how you map out. And and uh, yeah. So so hopefully at some point this camera will uh geez, tight squeeze. Yeah, okay. Pick something up. Okay. And then let's go over to this other room in the house. Over here, this static camera. This camera is not a uh, SLS camera. Obviously, it's just a basic static. But we're going to turn on right here the infrared. So you can see right there, we've got the infrared shot of this room, there's the IR illuminator. Yeah, Let's see if we can turn it on. We gotta turn the light off over there before it gets dark. Yep. So I'm gonna hit roll on that. Okay. And now we're ready to go. So I think we're gonna start upstairs. We're gonna get the devices out and then work our way down here as the night progresses. So you ready to go up there? Yeah, we have been. Like I said, it's already three hours in. So let's do it. Okay. Let's get up there. Immediately on the static camera, we picked up an orb flying in the room while we were still in the room. So we turned the static camera on. I haven't looked through all of the footage yet. We actually post all of our static camera footage raw on Patreon for you guys to look through. But if you'll notice here, most of the footage from this static camera is clean. There isn't any flashing. There isn't anything weird about the video. But at a certain point when Jeff and I are upstairs, we started to pick up this weird black flashing to the right side of the frame if you look over there. I don't know what this is. I don't know what's causing this. I'm not claiming that it was paranormal, but it just, it's weird. I don't know how to explain it. It's not like that in any of our other shots or with any of our other cameras. So you let me know below what you think this is. So we're upstairs at the inn. 
we've set up right here in this room, as you can see, these two motion sensing lights right here. These are new devices that we just bought. There's a third one down there right when I pointed at it. That was strange. So those are gonna pick up any motion in the room. Uh, they work with IR in the dark. That's when they actually work best. Yeah, go ahead. Uh -uh. Remember we had something fall? Yeah, we had something fall something in there when we were setting up. Okay. Weird. Um, then I've got motion sensing balls over there. Cat toys that when you touch them, look at like this. They illuminate. And the concept is with this, that this hallway is now, look at that one. Going yeah, out. that's what I said. Those, and that's weird, because look, you can't set it off even if you walk close. That's really weird that that one just yeah. went off. Yeah. yeah. That's, why, that's why I told you before, it's like someone's coming up and back yeah. that. That's why I think we gotta sit. Yeah, no, we're, we're gonna sit down. But just to explain this experiment, since this is a stairway and people would have, in the day, been coming up and down these stairs, going to these rooms, going over there, this would have been a area with a lot of motion so by placing these sort of devices that track motion we're, we're trying to in effect set a trap for the ghosts or the spirits i'm gonna place a rem pod over here that's the final step is there another rem pod somewhere or where is that mm -hmm. let's take this other rem pod because this is where the you know all the girls been seen playing with the ball yep so that's where that's why we've got the balls set yeah. up here Oh, did you see that? Yeah, I did. That was an EM hit on the green. Yeah. Well, let's get down. Let's sit. Weird. I got my cam. Where's, where's the, uh, oh, it uh, hit again. Look at, come, come, the green's hitting. Let me pause this for a second. So in the footage from Jeff's camera, I don't really believe in orbs, but let's just say that I do believe in orbs for a second. In Jeff's camera footage, you can see an orb kind of fly from the right side of the frame into my back, and almost the exact second that that happens, the REM pod starts to hit on the EMF detector, which is not the temperature gauge, it's actually picking up on a phantom EMF frequency that just walked near it. So. I don't know if these two events are connected. We didn't really pick up on any other orbs the whole night. I just thought this was interesting and needed to be pointed out. So, what do you guys think about this? All the lights. The green was hitting on that now, right behind it. It's the other one? Yeah. No, wait, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and get down. Yeah, let's get silent, yeah. Yeah. Stay near it. Where's the camera? So, Papa Spooks is right here. Yep. Yeah. That light is bright as hell. Oh, is it too bright? We can go half, I think. Yeah, we should do half. Yeah, so. It's okay. It almost reminds me of Forrest Gump okay. sitting on the bench. <laughs> yeah, so it's. We, we got it set up, so I think it's a matter of just like. I think we need to just like. Sit? Yeah. For and and be still. Just not talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to begin the investigation. We're sitting on this bench. All the motion sensing stuff is over there. We already had REM pod hits and the, uh, the motion ball going off at the top of the stairs, which is interesting. Um, so if there's anybody here in the home that we're in right now, if you were a mayor, if you were a young girl, we've set up some toys. There are some balls you can come play with. If you if you were the mayor, the what? The mayor. What's that? The guy who built this place oh. was the first was the mayor. Gosh, I'm making. Oh, yeah, sure. I don't know what. We could, yeah, I don't know what we could entice a mayor with, but. Well, I think we're kind of thinking more of a young girl. She's what's been seen here. Yeah, we'll focus on her. If you're the young girl. Don't be afraid of us, we just want to hang out and uh, play or do whatever you'd want to do, so. Or any, anybody else, I mean, this used to be a slave home. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you've had a number of P 
people, obviously, since 1842 that have lived here. But again, like you said, a little girl playing with a ball has been seen by a number of people up here over the years. And that's why we're out here, but also it could be the mayor or it could be a slave or it could be another person living here, you don't know. Mm -hmm. So anybody that's here, come out and show us by trying to activate some of these things we have set up for you here. They're not gonna hurt you. They're just really to let, let you show us that you're here. Can you come over and hang out with us if you're here? This is also very strange. So as you can see in this footage, I've paused it and replayed it. I'm not moving in this shot, but there's a tapping on my microphone. Now, I don't know if this is the spirit of the little girl being, you know, fixated with my microphone. I've got a, a fuzzy dead cat is what they call it in film school on it. I don't know if she thought that was a toy or an animal and was tapping on the microphone, but this tapping noise was just really strange to me when I was editing the video. I noticed it for the first time. Father like son. Look at how I'm sitting and look at how Jeff is sitting. Oh. <laughs> that's kind of cute. You know, it okay, um, we're far enough away here. You know, we've got the activation bars with up to nine feet that they uh, detect the motion of the lights will come on. Two REM pods. We've explained that. I've got four of these cat toys, but they're, again, motion activated. Uh, colored ball. So, so any anybody that's here, um, Colin and I are here just to kind of like get any kind of contact with you. We're completely friendly, um, especially the little girl. I think you like to play up here. It sounds like so. Come out and um, the noise. Yeah. So come out and. Um, so come out and um, try to make some of these lights go off or the sound go off for us. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here with us in this house? Can you walk up the stairs or walk over to my voice? I know you were just here a couple seconds ago. You know, so, sometimes I kind of feel like Maybe you know a lot of places we go to. It's almost like it has to stew a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been, you know, I've been doing this for like coming up on four hours, mm -hmm. and it's probably not as active of a place as we've been. Yeah, right. I mean, just the way it is. But, but that doesn't mean that it can't no, be. No. Oh, we, there's the REM pod. Just the REM pod. Just. No way. Yeah, right. The, the one on the right in front of us. Is that you? They, they made that. That just flickered. Are you here with us? Come on. Maybe they're trying to tell me, like, no, we are here. You don't need to be afraid of us. Can you make that light go off again, please, for me? It seemed like right when I was saying that, you're like, nope, I'm here. But yeah, like I was saying, a lot of times that we do this, um, it can start like this. Yeah. And then it can quickly change. Also, I mean, there there really isn't like super violent history here. There's no well that we know. gruesome death, yeah, that we know, I don't know of. I mean, but it was a slave. Yeah, but 
I mean, more to the degree of when you go to the hospital sure. or like an asylum, you have thousands of people that were dying terrible deaths. Yeah. So sometimes I feel like the history really does speak through a place. But you never know. The most innocuous places sometimes are the are the spookiest. So it's a waiting game. Yeah, it is a waiting game tonight. And it's well, an AM. And, uh, and you've got your camera focused on the on all the devices so people know here mm -hmm. as we're talking. But uh, you know, I mean as I, I think of like in Redwood Falls, Minnesota, at that museum we have just thick energy, mm -hmm. you know. And kind of energy that wasn't very um, good. Friendly. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you get places that, like Bolstead House, that really just didn't have much going on. Yep. You know? And uh, that stuff in between. But, uh, Is there anybody here with us in the home in general? Is there anybody here that has something to say? Can you come over towards us? We did not hear this at the time, but listen to this clip. It is terrifying. I picked up on the microphone audio a very eerie, very quiet laugh. I don't know if this sounds like a kid or an adult. I can't really tell, but the laugh is definitely there. And when I heard this for the first time when I was editing the video, I was definitely spooked. Don't be afraid of us. I mean, we're really honestly just here to try to make contact with you, just to like hear you out. A new spirit box? Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, I just got like a, um, I get weird little things, I don't know how it goes, but mm -hmm. I, I get like a, like my chin and underneath my chin feels kind of like tingly numb. You know, I like my tongue down. I, it sounds weird, but that's kind of the stuff that happens to me when I, I think like something's gonna happen. Either it's like my ringing in my ear, or a little bit of facial, like numbness. <laughs> mm. I'm fine. You have know, face. It's just mm -hmm. I feel that just a little bit um, in my head. So it's like there's something here, but. Uh, you're just waiting, waiting to make its presence. Yeah, it's kind of like that's what I mean. It's a waiting game, and if it's going to happen or not. But I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's more in my room where the gross pictures. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, that's where we've had three things now move or fall. But I kind of feel like there's actually something here. Just don't, and not, just don't know what it is. Not sinister, you know? Yeah, I just feel like it's more like there's something, some kind of energy. Also, I just got so hot sitting here. I'm like sweating all of a sudden. Can you see it on my face? No. I got, I got really fuzzy. Like in the last like huh. four minutes, I got That's so okay. sweaty. Okay, we're gonna do a spirit box, everybody. You know how this works. Okay, whoever's here with us, feel free to come through. If you're here with us, can you just say yes or hello or hi? We'll still be playing. All you gotta say is yes or hi or hello. Is there anybody here with us? Can you just say yes or hi or hello or what's up? Do you not want us here? I don't know. Why don't you want us here if that was you? Three. Come out. Come out. Are you a, a man or a woman? How how old are you? I heard seven. Can you tell us your age? 
Say that again. Eight, it's right there, yeah. Right there. Why don't we walk over here and do it? <laughs> Are you here in this bedroom? Was this your old room? It was. Almost. Were you someone that lived here? Who we're talking to right now? Who's in this home? Scratch. Scratch. Who's here in the house with us? Can you tell us your name? In turmoil. Go, please. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in this week to The Paranormal Files. I hope you guys are enjoying this new style of videos. Sorry it's taking so long to get these edited. I mean, they're just long videos. But I just wanna remind everybody that if you wanna support the channel, please consider picking up a piece of merch from our merch store. The link is in the description of this video or becoming a patron because the Patreon is what really helps keep the show alive. We're posting updates almost every day, exclusive videos. We're gonna be providing some brand new perks in the near future. My mom and I are working to uh, to set those up. But yeah, this is a family affair. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The ending is a really touching one for me and I loved it. And uh, yeah, if you find anything in the video that I missed, feel free to comment below and we're making a compilation soon of things that I missed that you guys pointed out in the videos. So thanks to everybody that always comments. I love all of you guys and uh, exciting news coming in the near future. Trust me, this shit is dope. Anyways, have a good one everybody. Stay spooky and enjoy this, uh, this film. Okay, so we've been doing this up here for Quite a while now. We're gonna head downstairs and see if we can get anything That's on the spear yeah. box. It's pretty dead though. Just sit and ask a couple questions in this room. Here. Right here. Mm -hmm. Our camera is completely dead, so there, there, there must be something here. And two. Can you, two. two. Did I, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Can you say how many of you are here again, please? How many? There's four. Mm. Did you hear? Mm -hmm. Can you say maybe one of your names? How many of you are here? Three. Three. Interesting. I wonder if it kind of could be where they come and go. Mm -hmm. Also. Yeah. Um, there's a few. If, if there's two or three or four people, entities, they're, they're kind of fighting here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what do you think, Colin? If you're in here right now, are you the little girl? I'm not here. Let's go walk that other way. Okay, that's still on. Yeah, this one's still rolling. It's the same. Same cameras. Can you tell us if you're good or bad? this run out, right? Mm -hmm. I go get the other battery and let that run out. We're done. And then we put these on the floor up there and just let it go. Yeah. We go in our rooms and that's it. Mm -hmm. And then we can finish up in the morning. Yeah. So just to kind of explain too, we've been here for a long time. Nothing, I mean hours, nothing 
crazy happening, not even any real intelligent contact. And we're not going to add stuff into the videos to make it more exciting. What we're going to choose to do at this point, not only because we got up at 4.30 this morning and flew to Georgia and drove here, but because we're not getting anything, we're going to end our physical investigation right now, leave all the cameras running to see if we can capture evidence. We're just going to call it a night and get good sleep so that we can get good investigations tomorrow as well. Nothing crazy happening here tonight. And we are sleeping here. Yeah. So if something happens in the middle of the night, we'll okay. be able to see it and hear it. So do you want to let these roll and finish it in the morning? Like saying, yeah, I think we should bring this camera upstairs, let this one roll, and then we should both keep these cameras with us in our bedrooms in case something happens when we're sleeping and we can talk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then we can save some battery well, too. Okay, so that's on. We, may not, we might not need that, right? Mm -mm. Okay, but we're gonna, this battery is brand new. I know it's an old, you know, we keep saying it, but this is brand new. Or not brand new, but it's just recharged. And so we're gonna put it on this one that died so quickly. And I can't see in here. It might, might help to have a light, you know? I'm gonna have my cell phone. Jeez. Isn't this the, I think this is the battery for the... No, this is the right one. Oh. Here, this just has to go down like that. Here, don't worry. Okay, just hang tight. It's just... You know, is this actually the wire is struggling? So make sure we can just put a light on. <laughs> you can tell we're really overtired. <laughs> I mean, come on. Honestly, this is just, just it's just kind of a comedic at this point. It is. I mean it's like I'm kinda of like I'm kinda of getting like a little I'm bit pissed. ticked. Yeah. Okay, now. Jesus, man. This isn't rocket science. You know, I can't. It's just. Come on, let me see. Don't, don't force it. This is not the right battery. Really? No. Oh, you're right, it's not. <laughs> okay, get that on I camera. Told camera. I told you literally. on camera. I did. Tired we are. You guys, you guys saw Never me mind. tell him at the beginning that this isn't the right battery. The battery. Then he said it was, and I agreed okay. with him. Here it is. It wasn't. It Here. wasn't. That's how tired we Here's are right now. That's how I'm much we're doing here. Yeah, how easy let's this see will that be silky now. Okay. See now, now we move this little knob. <laughs> okay, I know this fits. Um, Oh, see, there we go. There we wow. go. Now, how about looking at this thing? Okay, is that not in there right? No, I don't think it is. God, what the... God, it's jammed now in there. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, what the... This is Did like... you just jam that fucking in there? Here, okay, let's not break it. Oh, what? Okay, it's... Now it's on. There. Yeah. Okay. Jesus. There, 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 there. Oh, look. Look at. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, Jesus. Right there. It's fully charged. Okay. Yeah. Should we put it on? Let's just put it on here. Let me close this. <clears throat> okay. Don't lock yourself out. Oh, I just said something. It's kind of creepy how fast that door swung open. Get down to the ground, right? Is that even? I I, I can't tell where it's at. Yeah. That would be the angle. There's somewhere you could put under there. Yeah. Okay. And is it um? There. Perfect. That's it. Now it's a new battery. Whatever, however long it lasts, it's done. <laughs> Okay, and then we got the other one downstairs running yet that has the 
Connect device or the mm -hmm. SLS camera. We're going to pick that up in the morning. We moved it to the other room and we're going to go to bed. Both of those it lights up. just. It showed up on here. Interesting though that both those lights turn on. We've been walking around here and they didn't turn on. Really? Yeah. That's in my room. I don't know what that means, but I gotta go to bed. Yeah, so. Okay. So, just, to, just to say, everybody, this isn't the end of the episode. No. We're just going to bed. We're just going to see if maybe the spirits, if they're here, will come out with us gone. Yeah, we're going. That's oh, it. Did you hear that in my room? I know. Okay. All right, let's. let's okay, yeah, we're, we're. I think maybe something could show up. On yeah. Tonight, hopefully. I don't know. We'll we're going to go to bed, though, for the okay. night. Okay. He, he's got his camera over there. Yeah. I've got my camera. And we're still going to keep filming tomorrow, but. This is the end of the journey. Good night. Hey, good night. Do you have your camera? Oh, yeah. Okay. Good night. Bye. So at about 3.40 a.m. after we had gone to bed, we had been in bed for at least an hour at that point, the static cameras picked up these strange orbs. You can see in the footage before that there's no orbs. And then suddenly these two orbs enter the frame. And the moment that those orbs enter the frame of the camera, the motion detector lights actually go off in the hallway towards the camera, almost as if something is walking right towards the bedrooms. Now that is weird to have those orbs be moving in the area of the motion cameras and then have the motion detecting lights actually illuminate. But strangely enough, only about 15 minutes after we recorded these orbs and the lights going off on the static camera, Jeff woke up in his room and started filming because he heard a very creepy noise in his bedroom. So I'm gonna cut to his footage now. There's somebody in here. Can you say something that we can pick? I can pick up on the camera here. Okay, um, if there is somebody here, I'm going to try. We didn't get much earlier, but I'd like you to say something into this device. Tell me your name. And into here, whoever it might be, if you're here, I'm going to leave this run for a little bit. 
I, I thought I heard something just right over here underneath this picture in this area. Something drop, I don't see anything, but. I'm gonna set it down here on the bed. Say something. the picture of the girl that supposedly is seen. Show yourself. Say something into this device. Not gonna hurt you. Can you show yourself? Can you come in front of the screen? It's kind of weird. There's kind of like some patchiness showing up there. I have no idea if that's anything. I'm going to go to bed. I mean, if you want to make noise, go ahead. If you want to show yourself right now in front of this, now is your time. All right, folks. Um, I tried. somebody here um, I don't feel like you're harmful I'm gonna go to bed uh, I just I can't I'm gonna be shot tomorrow but uh, I'm not gonna show myself sorry I'm actually in bed but to kind of summarize it again I thought I, I was kind of almost asleep and I thought I heard again something over here drop um, about three times earlier today in the room from out in the hall, we heard something. I don't see anything on the floor. Um, that is the picture of the girl in the middle that has been seen. I don't know if there's a connection or not, but I did want to see if maybe I can get a response. Uh, good night. Was our night last night? Oh, I think it was fantastic, man. These people are also super nice and a uh, really cool place. Tired as hell, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got, really, we're up for 22 hours. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty nice. Got up at 4:30 in the morning, flew out to Atlanta, drove down to yeah. drove <laughs> drove drove down to Macon. Yeah. Went yeah. and filmed at a massacre grave, then oh. came and filmed at the hotel. Yeah. Then 2:30 for me. And then. And then I got just to show people, this is just a little bit of the luggage and equipment we have to bring in and out of every location. And these bags are heavy. Not for me. <laughs> Not for you. Yeah, true. You know how that goes. For a little weakling like me. Yeah, little pups like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and actually, last thing I'll say is I actually carried all this out here, by the way. Well, I, I carried two of those. I someone was taking photos I carried, again. I carried two of those. Okay. <laughs> Here's Jeff. Uh, yeah. So I guess we're just showing people in this little lull in the documentary no, what we uh, what we have to do every day. So our luggage is over there. No, that wasn't the point. It's getting a, a view from the portico where our luggage is at, walking to see the beauty of the cottage back here along with the house. Oh, I was just going to show people that yeah. there's a lot of behind the scenes uh, manual labor. Might as well start loading these bricks up, buddy. Me. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. You're a real no, funny guy. That's kind of true. Yeah? Yeah. So. That's what everyone always says when they don't do that much work. Uh, they try to overcompensate. Actually probably, I'm 
understand. Do they? Yeah. That what? You're, you're kind of a little douche? You're, uh, your heavy work is like holding that camera right there. <laughs> well, my arm is getting sore. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sad we didn't get to investigate the cottage. This is actually a cool place, you know? Because he was telling me people get I scratched like or... I sound like a beetle, you know? Yeah. A little bit more weird. Interesting. Anyway. Well, let's load up and head to the next one. Yeah, I will load up. <laughs> It was a long night for us at the inn, and at the end of the day, to end this episode, when we were in this city, we wanted to head to the Rose Hill Cemetery, a very famous burial ground in Macon, in order to pay respect to a couple of rock and roll heroes and legends that both Jeff and I grew up loving. So we just left the 1842 inn, we had lunch, healthy meal at Jimmy John's. Jeff and I, in a future episode of the show, we were just in the cemetery last night visiting the victims of the Wolfolk massacre where nine family members of a single family were eliminated with an ax one night outside of Macon where we're at. It's a very famous crime. But Jeff and I are huge Southern rock fans. Uh, Allman Brothers have been a huge influence in my life and my music that I love. Midnight Rider is one of my favorite songs of all time. Anybody that knows me knows that when I drink some beer I can get the guitar out and play that song because uh, I just love it. And I'm actually going to be releasing a single, one of my songs that I wrote, which is Allman Brothers uh, influenced, called uh, Soul Rider. So I'm going to be putting that out on Spotify and iTunes soon. But we figured that since we were here in Macon, where the Allman Brothers really got their start, and this is where Dwayne and Greg are buried, we're going to go visit their grave and leave them something. Blue sky. Do they look at Yeah, blue sky, just like they talk about. I love that song. Also, this is a very interesting cemetery that we're in. I would say the cool thing about the Allman Brothers, too, is historically as we're walking here, they knew enough not to fly the Confederate flag way back before it was, you know, not even talked about. I mean, I, I think that's just, like, respectful. Okay, what first struck me, you come over here and, you know, I mean, the Allman Brothers, so, Greg, I mean, he could have a mausoleum or whatever you want, but just think this is the place he picked right mm -hmm. I mean and the train is right there it's kind of like going back to the roots of just the common man you know blue collar hard worker I mean it's what he's about and this I'm sure is really pretty obviously when it's blooming but still it's still the railroad tracks and those shitty old buildings and shit over mm -hmm. there you know what I mean that that's pretty cool really says a lot me. about a person's character but this is, yeah, this is it. You know, facing that. The highway, old shitty part of town, a railroad right there going by. Crazy. I think it says quite a bit. Dwayne Allman. Raymond Oakley. They've been gone since 71 and 72. Yeah. That's been a long time, man. He died and Greg died in 2017. Uh, 17. So we like to usually leave memorials to the people that have died. We've done that for various murder victims in the past, like in Villisca or Redwood Falls. Today's a bit different since Greg and Dwayne had such a impact on my music. I wanted to leave them a couple words. In my high school, um, I'd say junior high through high school. Greg. So I said, here's my little note. Greg and Dwayne, thank you for what you did. Thank you for your beautiful music and your positive, inspiring outlook on life. Keep on keeping on, brothers. Never stop rocking. So I'm gonna leave them a little note. Okay. And anybody online, uh, hey, go to YouTube and just type in Sweet Melissa and watch Greg Allman sing it with um, Jackson Brown. I just, I love that. I love how he smiles and looks and he's looking happy. What'd you write? Well, it's not too poetic. It's okay. Simple. From the heart. 
Thanks for the influence on me as a young rebel. Hope you're happy, man. That's it. That's beautiful. What do you mean not poetic? That's yeah. actually really beautiful, dude. Well, that's it. We'll slide it under by yours. Leave him a little tribute. I'm gonna put this thing on top. Hold it down. Yeah. Well, just like the Almond Brothers, we're rambling men. Seems like we gotta get a get on. Trying to make a living and doing, doing the best, best I can. can. When it's, it's time for leaving, I hope you understand. I was born a rambling man. <laughs> My father was a gambler down, down in Georgia. He wound up on the wrong end of a gun. And I was born in the backseat of a greyhound bus. Rolling down Highway 41. Lord, I was born a rambling man. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in this week to The Paranormal Files. I hope you guys are enjoying this new style of videos. Sorry it's taking so long to get these edited. I mean, they're just long videos. But I just wanna remind everybody that if you wanna support the channel, please consider picking up a piece of merch from our merch store. The link is in the description of this video or becoming a patron because the Patreon is what really helps keep the show alive. We're posting updates almost every day, exclusive videos. We're gonna be providing some brand new perks in the near future. My mom and I are working to uh, to set those up. But yeah, this is a family affair. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The ending is a really touching one for me and I loved it. And uh, yeah, if you find anything in the video that I missed, feel free to comment below and we're making a compilation soon of things that I missed that you guys pointed out in the videos. So thanks to everybody that always comments. I love all of you guys and uh, exciting news coming in the near future. Trust me, this shit is dope. Anyways, have a good one everybody. Stay spooky and enjoy this, uh, this film. <laughs>